President Seven. And I'll ask Councilmember Palmieri to lead us in the invocation and pledge of allegiance. So, would everyone please stand? We come together this evening to discuss the issues that confront our city. May we always seek the wisdom to do things that reflect our concern for the people whom we represent. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, first on the agenda, we have some introductions of city staff by Chief of Police Smith. So would you please come forward and... Good afternoon. Uh, happy to be here today to, to introduce uh, not necessarily new staff, but new positions for some of our older, more experienced officers, we'll call them. Uh, with the, with, we actually just completed the, the final reorganization of the police department to bring it into a, a structure that that uh, I think is going to serve the city well. Uh, we had a recent retirement of Captain Cindy Feldor, which would allow us to make some adjustments in our staff. So if I could have Lieutenant Matt Harris stand, Captain Becky Kaiser stand, and Assistant Chief Kurt Shaney stand. These three were just recently approved by the Police and Fire Commission last week, and they were promoted to their ranks effective yesterday. So they are brand new senior staff members for me, and I'm excited to have them joining us, uh, uh, continuing on in there. In the service with us as my senior staff. Congratulations. Mayor, before we get started, Mark, do we have a backup tablet? Even with my power cord, my tablet won't power up. Um, I will locate one for you. Um, I'm sure one of the staff members can pull something together for you. I'd hate to not have all the information tonight. <laughs> oh, I hear you. And I just charged it too, and it just won't stay on. Okay. I think look, Go ahead. Mr. Godey's running out to get it. I have a hard copy if you'd like to borrow. I have a copy of the agenda. That's oh, fine. Hard, okay. You pick up my I will. Thank you. All right. We will proceed. Uh, the first on the agenda is a license status update for Pat Packers Pub at 1603 West. 20th Avenue. We'll name, you, name your, at, your name and home address. The license update, yeah. As far as the last meeting when I was here, I was virtually told if I didn't have somebody by the 6th, they were gonna take license back wouldn't have them. So the update we called in, my wife did, and the uh, last person we had backed out at last minute. So right now it's in the realtor's hand. We transferred it over and uh, signed papers, yeah, matter of fact, yesterday. So it's up for sale and that's where it's at. As far as the license go, I didn't uh, realize that there was anything different than what was said. Okay, thank you. Um, what, I mean, you said it's up for sale? I had, I had it personally, what, personally what? for sale myself. Okay. But now it's, uh, I have it with a realtor real that's just signed with them to, to uh, sell it for me, the, the whole property. Other than the sale being managed by a different person, what is it, nothing has changed, correct? No, no. no. All right. Okay. Mayor, are you, is it currently being marketed by this real estate firm with the license? Is that how it's being sold? I didn't, I didn't actually, I didn't uh, think that we'd have them anymore because that was the whole if I didn't have anybody in there, uh, papers in by the sixth, I was going to lose them. Well, so we were just I didn't know if there was some change of mind here, or why I'm here. No, is. Are you, well, we were just looking. We for were looking a for of some intent. Mm -hmm. 
we called. My wife called, and uh, and we did have somebody. He just, as a matter of fact, the Monday before your the meeting, he backed out. So the intent was, you want a letter of intent from somebody, and uh, he backed out. So <laughs> shocked, but that's the way it ended up. So right now I decided that I put it in a realtor's hand to sell it for me. So it's, it's part of that. What kind of guarantee of marketing did the realtor give you? Is he going to be going in a uh, real estate market in restaurant bar? What type of? I, it, I mean, the, we don't want to just yank the license because we know that would be that much harder. But if there's no real action in attempting to sell the property. In a short period of time or within a six month period, um, you know, we continued in activity is what we're concerned about. I guess that's I'm with Dave Spanbauer. Matter of fact, I have papers here okay. that are signed to market that as, as a realtor, what we, I didn't know what was happening here tonight yeah. to say to him, I, if I had license or not, I said. Right. If we do get an extension on it, then we'd market it with the license. But I didn't feel that we'd have license to market with unless the council okays to extend it for a period of time and try to run it as a restaurant. Because that's the way I was pushing it, as a restaurant combination, bar, restaurant. And then that's why. Yeah. Is that still what you want to do? I mean, yes. or, or oh, you yes. just want to sell and, and be done with it? It, it definitely would mark it out to me better to mark it out as a bar restaurant or a restaurant. <clears throat> and then having a license definitely uh, to me is a, actually a incentive to, for sale. Um, and That's, how long? And, excuse me. And how long has the property been vacant? Uh, and under market and I, being marketed, it's been actually it was marketed all since we closed it. And before that, about three years before that we closed, we had it up for sale as a bar uh, car wash combination. So it's, so it's been marketed for quite a few years uh, before we closed. I pulled it off the market and just list myself uh, because there was no bites. So I felt that it was better to pull it off the market for a period of time and then, reinst and then reinstate it, which I did. So, so how long has it been vacant? <clears throat> the building? Or how long has it been out of business? So uh, it's been uh, closed. The, uh, uh, August, uh, middle of August will be uh, two years. And so, and you were marketing it also prior. You said you were also seeking to sell it for several years prior to that. Yes, it it, it was marketed out uh, uh, after we closed it. We had it out on market to lease or sell, and uh, we had many bites, but nothing, nothing secure. Now I'm going back into a nationwide sell you know um the time you had it on the market have you lowered the price at all yes okay yeah <clears throat> definitely okay. so in fact this in last line. time we locked in mm -hmm. i dropped the price again to the market at a lower so in price. your mind it's a fair market value comparable. yes i we agreed when we talked that uh, it's a high potential corner I mean, 20 years ago, we were offered more than what mm -hmm. we have in our market. It will be on the market for it. Sure. Mayor. Could right. I just ask, uh, when was the last time the license was actively used? Cause it sounds like it's been vacant, but there was a period of time where maybe you were out of business. So when was the last time the, the, the license, license was actually would used? Been when we closed. When we closed uh, two years in ago? August. It'll be two years in August. No okay. August. <clears throat> That was the last time we used used the license. Mayor. Yes. Well, um, do you have any? I mean, what? Why do you think there is a barrier to having the property sold? 
I mean, what are your thoughts having, of why it hasn't sold? Why? Uh, recession, low market value brought on by uh, the recession. I mean, Things are climbing back. Uh, my value, why it isn't sold. Uh, I didn't give it away because I didn't have to. All my taxes, everything I owe on it is current. I'm not in a position that I have to give it away. That's why maybe it's not sold. I, I guess if I knocked off 300000 on it, it'd probably sell. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to. I had one more question. I think it's a fair market where we have it listed now, mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to run with that. Mm -hmm. The high potential value, I feel like, if you ask that uh, truthfully, is probably something different than what's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor? Um, I'm sorry if I didn't know this answer already, but um, it's the car wash and the, the, the pub restaurant combined? I, I, no, they're you not. Own you know, when you ask combined, to what degree? Do you own both of them? Are they I, for yeah, sales together? I own both of them. There are, are they different for sale? addresses, but the, having them up for sale. They're separate. Th no, that's the whole corners being okay. sold. So have With you the ever... car wash and okay. used to be the tavern. But um, what I was trying to do directly when I was trying to handle it is lease out the mm -hmm. bar. Have you ever tried to sell them separately or entertain uh, them separately? The highest potential is to sell together. Because mm -hmm. maybe the clientele is Because the breaking up the lot's been too, too small. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, the more you have, the better it'll sell. Mm -hmm. But maybe a restaurant owner doesn't want to own a car wash. Right. So mm -hmm. then, then. More limited market. Well, yes and no. Because a car wash takes care of itself. So if you buy the corner, even when you talk about sledding, you combine them. Well, it's helping pay out the bar or the restaurant for the money that's being made in the car wash. It takes care of itself in its own identity. So it's an asset to the building or the, <coughs> as a combined value. If somebody came in there, a bank or whatever, they tear everything down and re you know redo it according to what they want. And there's a lot of big companies that uh, look at many different ways to develop it. Mm -hmm. so, so my value right now is offering offering a way <coughs> that could market and uh, bring extra taxes in. Thank you. <clears throat> how long were you at, how long were you in business at that location? Uh, the business itself, 38 and a half years. The business, but uh, well. Still own it yet since we closed, so it's over 40 years. All right, questions? <clears throat> Does the council have any other questions of this gentleman? So, then what is the direction that we again refresh our memory? Well, your your general options are uh, he's applied for uh, renewal of his license. The council could do that. If the council wanted to not renew it, the city attorney recommends that you do what's called a notice of non-renewal, and it's almost similar to a revocation hearing, except it's just a non-renewal. Uh, alternatively, you could. Uh, you could award it and give them six months or some other time period like you've done before with but those are your different options we would have to bring it the license actually on the next meeting because this was just set for an update so, so either a direction for us to put the license on for renewal or direct us to prepare the uh, paperwork for a non-renewal hearing and we can only renew for one year. We can't renew for six months. It's a one-year license. Um, I think on a couple of the other ones, you directed us to take a look at it after six months again. Mm -hmm. But um, it is a one-year <coughs> license. Right. So, so we then would have the option if, <clears throat> if we wanted to review it after six months, we could then go forward with a revocation at that time. Correct. If we wanted to. But it's renewed for a year at that point. 
I guess I'm trying to count the number of vacant restaurants, bars, bars, restaurants in the city. And there's, Stuff there's, there's more than, I'm thinking of three. There's, there has to be more than three, I think. Well, Robbins, um, Mr. Cinders, Cinders uh, Sisters on 9th and Nap, Sisters, um, Mal Packers Pub. Um, well, there was a couple, they're not bars, restaurants, but there were a couple other ones in shopping malls and areas that, yes, strip my, malls that have open spots that were restaurants at one time. So, yes, my feeling is there is because there is a number of similar establishments, establishments for sales for sale and the number of years that you did own and operate this business. I think I'm inclined to, uh, not my fellow council members feel, but. Uh, I'm inclined to renew it for one more year to year. just show courtesy of the city for you being a long time uh, owner. owner within the city of Oshkosh. I think, you know, I know you, you've tried to market it yourself. Now you're, you're, you went with a company that didn't work. You took it back and now you're back with a company. I, I, I guess I could, do one more year or at least put it on the agenda and if other council members at the next council meeting want to put a you know, stipulation of six months review or five months or whatever it might be. Um, but I, I think we should go forward with it. I, I, guess, I just want, want a follow up question then. How long is your listing with your agent? How, how long is it for? Your until contract. It's, right now until it sells six months I've signed up. Okay. I will so definitely uh, so maybe uh, increase could. it accordingly. That's but normal. six months yeah. is a general uh, setup right. period of time. So, maybe we so I would bring, I, I guess my feelings are to put it back on the agenda for renewal and then we can, if we want to put any type of review on it, we can at that point. I, I don't, I'm not comfortable with re revocation at this point. Again, I think, you know, that many years in business, that's almost 40 years mm -hmm. in one location. That's, that's not easy to begin with. <clears throat> and it's been a, an establishment. I mean, in the days, it was a really popular spot. Yeah, we uh, you know, and it, a, you, you had a lot business. of good activity there and a lot of good events and sponsored a lot of events. We didn't close the place because we weren't making money. We just yeah, enough made up. <laughs> you wanted some time and to yourself. We decided to close it instead of <laughs> sure turning it over. Sure, and I, that's understandable. So, and you know, we most certainly appreciate your honesty. Yes. That's most appreciated. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So is the consensus that we put it on the next Bad. agenda yep. for renewal? For renewal. renewal. For renewal. Yeah. And we'll go from there. And then, like others, you guys can give us some direction sure. to yep. six months or something. Uh, uh, we'll do. Can I ask one question? Sure. What do I tell uh, my realtor? Uh, is there <clears throat> Your license is going to be on the agenda to be renewed. We may put some, like you, you said six months, let's just say with the realtor, we may say in six months we're going to reevaluate. So at this, this time, point, I do we're going to renew your license. Well, okay, at, no, you. no, you, okay. have, you have the license through the end, through the end of right. June. Then and we vote then on Then in yeah. June, at our next meeting, we will take, we will vote on approving a new license beginning 1 July. Right. When that is approved, then you, you will have that license for the one year term but there may be some stipulations put on it that says, you know, we understand you, like the mayor said, you've been in business many years, we appreciate that. But there may be another, you know, six months from now, someone, you, we may have you back here say, okay, where's it at now? Because at some point it's gonna be, you know, it's obviously, if it continues on even with a license, most likely the market has viewed it as this is not a place they would want, that the market wants to locate with a bar slash restaurant. Yes, thank you. I do understand that. Okay. I think one thing we have to consider too: once there is an accepted offer, it doesn't close overnight. Right. Right. So there's at least thirty to sixty days that has to be factored into a bona fide offer, an accepted mm -hmm. offer to purchase. Right. But if if something like that happens, the owners can certainly contact City Hall to let them know. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because obviously we don't want to do anything to to damage. An offer. Yes, we definitely would. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is a public hearing, which is resolution 17 274. This will require three readings before we take the vote. 
And that's resolution 17-274, approve final resolutions for special assessments, storm sewer laterals, various locations. Second reading, resolution 17-274, approve final resolutions for special assessments, storm sewer laterals, various locations. Third and final reading, Resolution 17-274, approve final resolutions for special assessments, storm sewer laterals, various locations. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this resolution? I see no one coming forward. I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? Could, I, could we have Steve come down, Steve Cody? Just... Real quick, um, Mr. Gordy, uh there was a gentleman and a lady here earlier regarding this. Um, they were trying to get some information. Were they able to meet with you? Yes, they were. And get their yeah, questions the answered? Room, yeah. The okay. The, uh, I, I just wanted to double check that because I didn't see them here now. So. No, we were able to meet with them. Okay. Thank you. Are there any further questions or discussion? Would the Deputy City Clerk please take a roll? Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Hansky? Aye. Krause? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. We go to citizen statements to council. Citizens to, are to address the council only. Statements are limited to five minutes. Must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda. Are limited to issues that have an impact on the City of Oshkosh. And the Common Council may address at a future meeting and must not include endorsements of any candidates or any or other electioneering. Is there anyone who would like to speak to the Council? Good evening. Uh, my name is Gary Gray, 815 West Glenwood. Uh, there is a saying that uh, goes time flies when you're having fun. And I make that uh, comment by the fact that in about a month, there is going to be a fun process starting. That is the beginning of the 2018 budget process. And as most people who have been participating in the budget process, I was watching the budget process for the last three or four years, there's basically looking at department expenses, uh, projections of uh, state aid, and uh, various licensing fees. What, what I uh, would suggest the council would do is perhaps be, be uh, in a little bit creative mood and take a look at other options of revenues uh, than property tax increases, licensing fees, uh, state aid. State aid is basically going to be uh, reduced, being reduced, I would guess, but perhaps there are some other ways to increase revenue without increasing taxes, without increasing licenses or fees. Um, what, one quick example is uh, a subject that's on the agenda for tonight, namely uh, pilot payments. Uh, perhaps well, let, let me put it this way. I, I, I don't know of any reasonable person that would be objecting for the city officials to get additional pilot payments or other, other contributions to fund city activities. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? I'm part of Rethink and um, FACT. It's a youth-led tobacco prevention group. Uh, we, our goal right now is tobacco-free parks. We're having events this Thursday. We called all of you, by the way. Um, this Thursday at Menominee Park at 5 o'clock in Shelter 3. It's a tobacco, I mean, it's a cigarette butt cleanup. If you have any questions about this event, just check your, e I mean, your voicemails. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do any council members have any questions? Okay. 
Any questions? Sir? I, Ms. Lee, I have your number right here. I, we'll be calling you. <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Do I have to give my address? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Barney, 1335 Summon Ave. It's been a long time. I wasn't sure that was still a rule. But um, I have a gift for the mayor to share with the council members and maybe the staff as well. I have uh, copies of the summary for policymakers of uh, each of the working groups of the um, IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, um, from their uh, their most recent assessment report, um, which comes out about every five years. This is considered the most authoritative source of information in the world on the subject of climate change. And each, this is uh, four, um, four little booklets here containing the, the, sub, the summaries from, um, for, from each section of that report, including a summary for policymakers, which is only about 20 pages or so in each volume, which is explicitly written for um, people who are, people like you, who are trying to um, deal with climate change, uh, policies to deal with uh, to help fight climate change and uh, or global warming, if you prefer. Um, you know, the the uh, federal government has now dropped dropped the ball, and the state government dropped the ball years ago, and uh, so there is a re renewal of the movement of a a movement nationwide now to engage uh, local governments like this body to deal with the problem. Um, the federal, by the way, I want to just mention, I'll, before I give you this uh, copies of this report, uh, this copy of the report, um, the federal government itself has done a, done a greenhouse gas inventory of the city of Oshkosh, 2015. I just looked it up again today to make sure it's still there. And uh, I'll probably try to follow up and with an email with that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, give it to the clerk. Give those to the city clerk should have them. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? I see no one coming forward. Move. We'll now move to consent consent agenda items. These items are those items of routine administrative nature that are voted on by the council in a single roll call vote. Staff recommends approval of all items. Any member of the public or common council may request that an item be removed from the consent agenda for discussion. Number two is report of bills by finance director. Three, receipt and filing of common council minutes from April 25, 2017. Four, receipt and filing of museum board minutes from May 4, 2017. Five, receipt and filing of library board minutes from May 25, 2017. Receipt of claims filed with the city's insurance company A. Paula Roast for alleged damages from a city vehicle. B. Carol Velasco for alleged damages re related to a water main. Now we go into our resolutions. The first is 17 275. Award bid to Paul Conway Shields for 5.11 11 tactical series uniform gear for fire department. Resolution 17 276. Approve payment in lieu of taxes in Perrin's pilot close Perrin's agreement with Oshkosh Housing Authority and Wait Rug Housing LLC, LLC for property located at 300 East Custer Avenue. Resolution 17-277, approved contract with State of Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs, Division of Emergency Management for Wisconsin Hazardous Materials Response System Services. 
Resolution 17-278. Uh, re resolution number 17-232, initial resolution for special assessments. Contract number 17-22, Sawdust District Improvements. <coughs> Resolution 17-279, award bid for public works contract number 17-12 to Dormer Inc. for miscellaneous utility improvements, $1,978.62.15. Resolution 17-280, approved pilot program lead service line repl replacement policy. Resolution 17-281, approved Safe Drinking Water Loan Program Financial Assistance, assistance Agreement with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources for project number 4874-10. Resolution 17-282, approved change order number one for public works contract number 16-09, water main relay installation a negative $32,018.57. Resolution 17-283, approved change order number one for public works contract number 16-04, paving sidewalk, driveway, and utilities, first local street contract program in parens, north side area, closed parens, negative $40,539.42. Resolution 17-284, approved professional service agreement with AECOM for South Shore Morgan District Riverwalk, $236,150. Resolution 17-285, approved specific imp implementation plan for a new parking lot, 227 West Linwood <coughs> Avenue, Oaklawn Elementary School. Plan Commission recommends approval. Resolution 17-286, approved sale of fermented malt beverages at Leach Amphitheater by Parks Department staff. Resolution 17-287, approve an amendment to special event Oshkosh Corporation to utilize city streets for the 100th anniversary parade, July 14 and 15, 2017. Resolution 17-288, approve appointments to the following boards and commissions. Bid Board, Housing Authority, Grant Opera House Advisory Board, Sustainability Advisory Board, and Oshkosh Public Museum Board. Final resolution under consent is approve special Class B licenses, operator and taxi cab licenses. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to any of these items on the consent agenda? I see no one coming forward. I will bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion. Uh, Mayor, I just want okay. to, uh, under bills, there was a, a check for uh, Pansky Enterprises. That is a business that my parents own, and I just wanted to clear up any potential conflict of interest. Um, it is a business independent of myself. I have, I have nothing to do with that. They just did some t-shirts. Um, so that we might see some more moving forward. I don't know. I've asked my dad just to keep me informed as to when they come through so I could bring your attention to that. But I do not benefit financially from that. I live independently of my parents. So um, I just wanted to be transparent about that. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Councilmember Palmieri. Um, yes, could I ask um, Alan Davis if, if you would come forward about um, just the, the pilot uh, approved payment in lieu of taxes agreement. Um, we've got another uh, resolution 17280 that refers to a pilot program. If Mr. Davis could just kind of explain um, what the difference is there. Had, had some citizens asked me what a pilot agreement is as opposed to a pilot program. Uh, uh, the pilot agreement is actually an abbreviation for payment in lieu of taxes, and that has to do with an uh, organization, a nonprofit tax exempt organization, uh, basically committing to uh, funding a certain amount of money, giving money to the city in lieu of their property tax assessment since they don't pay property taxes. I think the other pilot program is related to like a first test case type of pilot and that related to the, if I recall, the lead, lead pipe program. Yes. So 
two uses of the word pilot but different meanings. Yes, thanks for clearing that up. And along those lines on uh, the pilot program, I believe the Housing Authority is one of the few um, nonprofit or <coughs> folks that are tax exempt that actually do voluntarily make those payments. Is that correct? There is state statute that relates to it a little bit, and maybe uh, City Attorney Lawrence could chime in on that yeah. part. I think housing authorities, there is a specific provision in the state statute that allows them to make those kind of payments, and I think they are actually kind of encouraged to do that. Um, most people, when they're tax exempt, don't voluntarily step forward and make a payment. But they could if they, they But they could if they, they, could. If they yes. would like to. Yes, and so hopefully we'll I think I heard from the assessor's office we may be seeing some more of those uh, step forward. So that'll be interesting. That's all I had for that. Just um, there was a question. I thought mm -hmm. it was a good question. And then also I have a question for Ray Maurer. Um, resolution 17-286 on the approving the sale of fermented malt beverages. Could you just maybe explain a little bit about why we're asking or why we're approving this? Sure. Um, in the years prior to me getting here when the city took over the operation of the leach, I think there was an agreement, a collaboration between the city parks department and the Convention Visitors Bureau um, to allow us to sell malted beverages during city events. And with the um, um, changeover in leadership at the CVB <coughs> recently, I got a call um, asking for history on that. And as we had some discussion, um, I had discussion with Lynn Peters, um, we did reference the state statute that allows us city employees to sell in the parks and both of us felt that this was the right time to go that route um, similar to the golf course and what we do at the REITs concessions um, so it will be our city staff they are responsible um, we do have somebody taking the responsible bartenders course and we have to have somebody on uh, the premises during that time so it'll be for us to sell um, at our sponsored events thank you sure that's all I have well, I see Ms. Larson move to the front, and I wouldn't want Mr. Taves to have driven up all, you know, and not been able to uh, grace us with his presence. So 17, 296, 297, and 298, just if you could recap. Those are all Those new, are resolutions. new resolutions. Oh, never mind then. I jumped ahead of myself. Stay where you are. <laughs> I, I, I do have one question um, on resolution 17-277. Chief Franz wants to come forward, please. <clears throat> I know we've been in a disagreement with the um, state for a long, long time. My only real question is, when a team gets called out and they're outside the city of Oshkosh, and we have to cover uh, those officers being gone. Is that at our expense, or does that get spilled back to the state since these uh, firefighters are on a hazardous call? Yes, that um, they would. That would also be included in the bill. And there's two ways that we're reimbursed. The first um, would be to uh, build a responsible party, but our contract states that if the responsible party fails or there is no um, responsible party to directly be connected with that spill, sometimes there's some unusual circumstances, then the state has a fund that provides that reimbursement for us. Okay, good. I, there's just a question that I wanted to make sure the citizens realize that in some of these agreements, the taxpayers of Oshkosh aren't paying for their services being taken somewhere outside the city. Yeah. And then when they are gone for extended period of time, you have a procedure in place to fill their spots and things like that. Yes. And that equipment that they take is totally separate to equipment that would be, unless we had a hazardous spill within the city, would be equipment not used for anything other than that. Correct. Right. And, and all of that equipment is funded through this program. So the one thing that benefits us, you know, by housing that equipment and having the staff here is our response time is much lower and we, we house it here so we have that advantage on our side. But then again, even if it would occur in the state, we have those same means for being reimbursed for that cost. Okay, and then just one final, roughly how many calls a year does the unit get called um, on? Or? It's, <clears throat> it's really dropped down over the, the last few years. Fortunately, industry in, has put a lot of engineering controls and things in place, most of our other transportation related um, I would say um, 
less than a half a dozen times a year that we would okay. leave the city. All right, very good. And I know we have a lot of mutual aid agreements, so police department needs a bomb squad. They come from Green Bay, so thank you. Okay. Uh, does calls, council have any further questions? I just had one more question. Um, 17287, Kathy Snell. Um, there was an amendment to the Oshkosh Corporation City Streets. Looks like they want to close down. Is it 23rd Street for two days? Correct. Complete closure. Um, if you, I included a map. Yes. Uh, the closure will go from Minnesota Street to Oregon Street. Um, that's a section. Uh, road there's um, a, just I think one or two local businesses there that the Oshkosh Corporation is going to reach out to and and talk to about that closure um, and then they will be responsible for also contacting the individuals on Minnesota and Montana Street who also have businesses on that section but would have access in and out based on the um, okay that that was based really on the layout of those roads sure so they will still have access to the business okay. correct all right thanks There are no further questions. Would you please take the roll? Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Kansky? Aye. Crozy? Aye. Heck? Aye. Mayor Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. There were no items removed from the consent agenda, so we move on to pending ordinances. There's one, which is Ordinance 17 290, modify parking regulations on 17th Avenue. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this pending ordinance? I see no one coming forward. Bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? Would you please take the roll? Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Krause? Aye. Heck? Aye. Mayor Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. We'll move on to new resolutions. The first is resolution 17 291 approve annual city licenses and renewal. Renewals closed per ends. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this resolution? I see no one coming forward. Bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So, so moved. moved. Discussion? Second. I see no one with their hands up, so would you please take the roll? Paul Mary? Aye. Alice Nosby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Krause? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Cummings. Aye. Carried seven. You're already anticipating. Resolution 17 292 authorize staff to complete and file a water rate increase application with the Public Service Commission of Wisconsin. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to that? This resolution. Bring it back to council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Discussion? Ms. Larson, <laughs> um, during the last election, there was a lot of discussion about increases in utility fees, and um, <clears throat> which we all understand that we all up here, each one of us pays the increases in utility fees. We'd love to have 0% increase in utility fees. If we could, we'd like to lower the rate. Um, could, is, and I know we had the memo here, uh, but, but you know, it is simply stated, we need to continue to make investments in our infrastructure. We need to continue making expenses that increase related to the water utility so that when we turn on our taps, the water's there. Could you give some, just a little additional detail into kind of what it is that's driving these cost increases? Sure. <clears throat> and, and may I add with that, as well is that you know there's one thing here but it's it's it makes it sound like we're increasing fees at 15 percent that's certainly not the case so all the things that we kind of discussed before that I think is very informational and educational to the public um, you take the floor <laughs> okay so the goal of bringing this forward to the council the 15 percent was purely just an estimate and it's an estimate based on the cash flow projection as well as the capital projection that was presented in the CIP workshop last year. Um, so it's our starting point. Uh, in the prior rate increase, 
we had started with an anticipated 15% rate increase. However, when we did end our analysis and our discussions with the Public Service Commission and they completed their uh, process, we did only approve and bring forward an 8% rate increase. So it's very important to um, realize that although we're saying an estimated 15%, that's not the final number of what will come forward. The only thing that can be approved will be what is uh, analyzed and approved through a rate of return that is set by the Public Service Commission. Um, the one thing that I would mention is, in 2017, the citizens will not receive a water rate increase. So we need to start the process in 17. However, um, it's taking six months plus to go through this very comprehensive review. Uh, so we need to start it now. But our anticipation and our intent is to not begin a rate increase until January 1 of 2018. Um, there are several components behind the need for a rate increase, uh, which I'll highlight for you. Uh, a lot of it has to do with aging infrastructure. Uh, the utilities, unfortunately, had many years of which we did not keep up with our infrastructure in the ground. And in, in order to ensure a quality and reliable product for our citizens, one of which they deserve and they expect. We need to continue to catch up that infrastructure. There are also two other main capital projects that are really driving our rates right now. One would be the Marion Road Water Tower. That was an estimated about $4 million investment for the water utility. And then we also have what is referred to as the Clear Well Replacement. Uh, that is a capital project in 2018 for approximately $10 million just for construction. Um, so two very large projects that do impact the water utility because we do rely on debt. And so debt would be the last component. And we need to ensure that we are able to maintain and meet our debt service covenants, which I touched a little bit on the Moody's uh, memo that I gave you on Friday that it's very important that we continue to establish the necessary rates to meet that debt service coverage as that's a covenants requirement in our bonds. Um, so is that, is there anything else that I can help provide? Um, we do only like to do a rate increase every two years just because of the amount of time and the analysis uh, that is provided and, and required to go through this process. And, and can you share, Ms. Larson, what the, the repercussions are or the consequences are of not keeping current and, and making sure that, that we have the cash flow? So that would be a, a very negative impact for the city. Uh, it would result in a downgrade with our Moody's rating, of which we rely on to get a lower rate for our debt service. Um, and that we would need to report that on our EMMA reporting. Uh, so it's, it's very critical that that is maintained and met to standard. Uh, the city actually goes through a process every year when we issue debt to ensure that we meet that debt service coverage. And one uh, exercise that we did need to do this year, which is called a certification, uh, and we did not have with our 2016 rate sufficient debt service coverage. And so we needed to do a certification with our 8-1-2016 rates to prove that we would have that uh, existing rate structure and the cash flow to meet that debt service covenants. And, and not to mention, and Chief Franz, <clears throat> you can just nod your head. But if we wouldn't replace, part of the reason we're replacing the water tower is to maintain water pressure, which allows you and your staff should we need fire protection to provide that within the city, correct? Yes. So it's, it's not only making investments in our drinking water, but it's also in providing water services for the public safety of the community. Correct. It, that is imperative. And it, that um, <clears throat> water protection provides us a 
a rating for the fire which impacts all our homeowners and their uh, insurance requirements so uh, very critical the, uh, the other note I would notate for the public as well as the council is um, when we, we do a 10-year analysis, we're looking at cash, debt, and capital outlay and operations. Uh, currently, we are projecting that this will be our largest increase that is needed in the next 10 years. The analysis is showing that we will drop down into below the single digits, and that's going at this every other year for a rate increase. So hopefully there, there is pending something that we don't currently know about in our infrastructure. It looks like we're starting to hit that more stabilized period and, and more stabilized rates for our, our utility customers. So we're, in essence, kind of paying for, we're making investments that sh would ha should have been made in the past mm -hmm. that weren't because previous councils may not have wanted to make the hard decision about paying for the things that the citizens for the benefit of the public safety and the public good. Um, so and uh, again oh, one other question the, the cash flow analysis that you mentioned and this and the capital improvements I know that we all have access to that. Is there and I don't know Trina, Ms. Larson, Mr. Uh, Roloff, I, I believe that that is all information that is available to the citizens. I mean, where would they go to if someone wanted to review these cash flow analysis that, we did, that we're basing this on? This is not just a willy-nilly thing that we're pulling out and saying, hey, let's raise water rates. Uh, but, you know, it also might be something that, you know, maybe the, the media or somebody want to pick up and, 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 uh, and, and actually present and explain to the community what it is. So where would they find that information? Well, a couple sources. One, uh, we submit our findings to uh, the Public Service Commission, and then the Public Service Commission puts it on their website so they, that whether it's us or WPS or whatever utility that's regulated by the Public Service Commission, that will be on their website that, they've, uh, that, that we've applied for a rate increase application and the application's on file with them. So you can get it from independently from them or you can contact our finance department. So there is document, the doc is, again, there is documentation out there to validate and prove the need for this. Okay, thank you. Ms. Larson, um, under the fiscal impact, you talk about the 2017 budget workshop, the 10-year cash flow analysis, a 15% rate increase. Is that 15% over a 10-year period? Or are you saying that we could have to go up to 15% every other year and keep going up 15, 15, 15. I know you did say that it would come probably in lower, but it looks like when you read this that uh, are we doing a 15% increase over a 10 year period or are we doing a 15% application now? Because once the application's approved, we can't change it, right? We can't come back and say, oh, well, we decided to only go 3%, even though they said we could go up to 6%. We can't do that, right? Once the PSC, approves a rate, it's pretty much done, right? That is correct. Once the Public Service Commission does approve the rate, um, it does not come back to council. Um, for clarification, it's 15% for this rate increase that we're looking at for as of January 1, 2018. It's not 15% percent moving concurrently forward into the future years. Okay. Um, so that Two million, uh, estimated two million dollars, is for the rate increase that um, would be estimated. Uh, the Public Service Commission, I would anticipate, will not improve a fifty, approve a fifteen percent rate increase. So uh, that was really provided to the council for information, and it's based on last year's analysis. Uh, I would anticipate that the Public <coughs> Service Commission. The rate that they approve will be less than that. Okay. Are there any further count questions from council? I mean, I, I look forward to the headlines coming up. Council approves 15% increase. Well, and, and to that point, I guess that tell our story, and you brought some of that up. I, I'm hoping that as we move forward and we get the whatever the increase is going to be that in our water bill in our in our information back to our citizens 
not only do we explain where the money goes, but in comparison to other communities. Everybody keeps saying, well, Oshkosh is so high, but we know that we're kind of in the middle of the pack even. There's a lot of other communities that have a lot higher water rate, have a lot other issues, same as we do. Um, I'm sure that there'll be some stormwater projects coming up in the 2018 CIP that we have to do. And so I just think we need to keep letting our citizens know where that money goes, why it's going there. Besides that, it's, it's paying for other things like the water tower and our bond ratings and our, our insurance ratings for our property owners. And so it is expensive. But in, in, a, in a way, we're also penalizing our citizens because you mentioned decrease in usage from 2013 to present. So people are conserving water, but yet they're paying more. So it's almost like a double-edged sword in a sense that um, they're being penalized, yet they're saving water. And that's what we want. We have rain barrels and runoff and everything. And um, yet we also have DNR requirements and things like that. So it's a, it's a, it's a tough pill to swallow. And I'm sure we're going to hear a lot from citizens on this one. So, you know. But we can't let the utility falter. No, and we, and we can't, can, we can't not no. keep improving our infrastructure. So no, and 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 you are correct that usage is going down, but we still have to maintain a certain level of infrastructure sure. to provide, no matter what it is. We can't just shut off <clears throat> ten percent of the infrastructure. We can't right. just go and carve out ten percent of something. That we have to make a cap. You know, when we make that capital investment, that's made and it's there until we either take that particular, until we replace it or it just you know, moves through the system, so to speak. So yes, it is great that we're using less water, but we, it's costing more to maintain the system to provide that, no matter how much we're using. Well, and the other thing as well is you take a look at what's in the 2018 budget, as Ms. Larson and I were talking about, it's a $10 million project that, you know, if the DNR had their way, would have been done 10 years ago. We haven't done it, and at some point, their patience will start to run out, and we're going to have to face that $10 million project, whether we like to or not. And if it was done 10 years ago, it probably wouldn't have been $10 million. <laughs> That's quite true. <laughs> if if no I could ask, if I could ask um, Ms. Larson, and, and perhaps you might have to defer to someone else, we still have, uh, I had a resident ask um, about whether or not we were ending the storm, or I'm sorry, the rain barrel credit program. It's my understanding that's still in existence. We're still doing rain barrels, and residents can still apply for those credits. Mr. Yeah, Robbie? Yeah, that's uh, that's a part of the stormwater utility, but absolutely that is still in place. It is not being discontinued. Thank you. Thanks for asking, because you know we want to make sure people are aware that those things are still there. And some people say, you know, I'm going to give this shot now, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. that's a good thing. If there are no, uh, no further questions, would you please take the roll? Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Crozy? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Resolution 17 293, amend 2017 Capital Improvement Program, program <coughs> Field Operation Facility la Landscaping, $15,000. <coughs> Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this resolution? See no one coming forward. Back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion. I just have one comment. What has been done so far looks really great. Really looks great. Thank you. And Mr. Robbie, if you don't just want to briefly, in the analysis, you, we bought two uh, pieces of equipment that came in under budget, so the money is just being shifted out of that. Yeah, That's what we're doing doing. is we're shifting some money from the uh, major equipment vehicle section from uh, some vehicles that came in under budget over to the property improvements uh, to be able to pay for some more of the landscaping that is required for our zoning code. So okay. we're, we're getting that landscaping put in piece by piece. All right, very good, thank you. Any other fur further questions or comments from council? I see no one, so would you please take the roll? Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Hansky? Aye. Crozy? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Resolution 17 294 approved development agreement with 50 West 6th Street LLC for redevelopment of the former Granary Restaurant at 50 West 6th Avenue 
construction of a new parking lot and rehabilitation of an existing parking lot. Is there anyone, yes, who would like to speak to this resolution? Maybe I could start and then. Sure. Wait. Uh, it's going to get brought back. No, this is a public portion yet. Yeah, no, they can speak on it. They can speak to it before okay. it's on the. I was just going to tell the, the, the council that uh, both these items, uh, 26 and 27, are related. So I just wanted to preface that. One relates to the development agreement, and the other one is the improvements in the right of way uh, that are be going to be done as part of this project. Uh, so it's a relatively complex project when it comes to the agreements, uh, but the, um, in the final analysis, it's still the redevelopment and the rehabilitation of the granary project. And maybe I'll let Mr. Hess talk about what he wants to talk <coughs> about, and then I can answer any questions that the council would have for me. So my name is Tim Hess. I live at 2645 Templeton Place uh, here in Oshkosh. Uh, after the last council meeting, I had a neighbor down the street come down and her name is Betty, and I'll see her later, I'm sure, or tomorrow. She said, hey, Tim, you seriously went to the city and you asked for $700,000 for a $1 million project and tried to get me to explain that, because that's what WLUK talked about last time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, Betty, that's not what, what is happening. So I want to explain a little bit uh, our take on what's going on tell you a little bit about myself, who I am, how I'm involved in this project, and give you a, a take of what we think is going on. So anyways, uh, I'm a professional statistician. I got my doctorate degree from UW-Madison, uh, was a professor of mathematics, applied mathematics, so I taught statistics, finance, all this wonderful stuff. Uh, I'm gainfully employed by the University of Wisconsin right now, but sometimes I do outside consulting. And when I do it, I do it under the banner of this and Vista Analytics here that I've put together with a, a couple of colleagues of mine. Uh, so you've seen a couple analyses for the Beach Building and the Washington Building from me before. I want to talk a little bit about this one and be able to explain to Betty why I didn't ask for that. So let's see here. There's a slideshow. I'm going to go from the beginning. So anyways, you know, the, the state statutes have this thing called the but for clause. And last time, I think you guys basically approved that. And in effect, uh, the Depart Wisconsin Department of Revenue puts together this tip manual. Chapter five of that talks about the but for test. And my take on it, the gist of it is this, that for us to get TIF on any development project, we need to prove to you guys that we need it to happen. And now tonight, I think it's your guys' responsibility to make sure that now that supposedly we've gotten the TIF, that we're not going to get a windfall from it. And so there's language in the Wisconsin Department of Revenue that talks about that. So I want to kind of give you our arguments as to why we think what we're asking is reasonable and the time frame for it. So with any investment, sorry, with any investment, you typically got to talk about opportunity costs. And other opportunities for us would be to potentially go out and invest in, say, the stock market. So I've included for you the 10-year annualized rates of returns for the last 37 years that I pulled down from Yahoo Finance here. Uh, so an interpretation of this, if you went to 2005, what that basically means is, hey, if you invested money, now, sure, this is an index, but there are funds that you could have the exact mix that comprises the S&P 500. But if you invested money on, say, January 1st of 2006, and you left it in there for 10 years, that bar there for 2015 at 7.3% tells you, colloquially, we could say, on average, every year you would have gotten 7.3% sort of return. So it gives you an idea of some of the opportunities that investors look at. Uh, <coughs> another thing that we should consider is what other communities do. Uh, I believe Darren had a conversation with Joe Gramaki from the city of Madison, who suggested to us that down in Madison, the typical TIFs that come in range between 12 and 15 percent. So you see that relative to, say, what an investment in the stock market would be. Of course, an investment in the stock market is much more liquidable. If I need to get out of it, I can quickly turn around and sell it compared to real estate. 
That may be why they typically offer higher rates of return. So to be clear, without TIF, the analysis showed that the internal rate of return was 1.95%. But it's not just the internal rate of return. It's that it's the internal rate of return of 1.95%, but us as a development group would have to bring in $679,000 to make this happen. And that's part of the reason why we wouldn't do it but for TIF. So what we have proposed is getting a 7 4.72% internal rate of return, and the investment that we're bringing to the table to make that happen is $393,000. So yes, the TIF gives us a better rate of return on things, but at the same time, it makes it such that we don't have to bring nearly as much money to the table to the point where we wouldn't have done it except for the prospect of TIF. So I'm just trying to put rates of return into context for you guys. So to be clear, the overall project cost to us is going to be $1.56 million. If I break that down in terms of where's that money coming from, $800,000, or roughly 51%, is coming from private financing. The development team is bringing in, as I had said, the $393,000. And then the TIF that we're looking to monetize would bring a net present value of the $369,000. Note, uh, the city's TIF policy suggests that the developer needs to bring in at least 15%, and anything more than that, we look favorable. So we're bringing in 25. We're doing better than the minimum that the TIF would request here. So here's the crux of the issue to respond to Betty. <laughs> what is the net present value? And why are there two different numbers being presented in terms of the city's contribution? So what I want you to think about is what would happen if you went out and bought a house? And say you were a veteran like myself and you could go out and mortgage 100% of it. So you're going to buy it for $200,000. Uh, you're going to mortgage a full $200,000. So the first thing that I would do is I'd go on to Google, and I'd say, hey, mortgage calculator, and up would pop this little box here. And in there, you would enter $200,000. You would enter your present interest rates. And right now, they're at either 4 and an eighth to 4 and a quarter for a 30-year fixed mortgage. And if I did that, Google would happily tell me that the overall value is $984. That would be your monthly payment that you would need to come up with. But in that little gray text that they have shortened there, they talk about what's the overall cost going to be for this mortgage if we keep it over the entire course of 30 years. And it's that $354,000. That's that little crux that when we go out and get a mortgage, we don't want to look at that. That's the big number there. But that is what it ends up costing us. So how do you come up with that? $354,000, well, you take that 984, you multiply it by 12 payments in a year, and you multiply that by 30 years, that's that $354,000. So this graph here that I'm showing in that blue line is the total cumulative payments over the course of the 30 years. So what is net present value? Well, the net present value is actually that exact same equation that you use to calculate what the payment is, except we're solving for a different value. Instead, we take the standpoint of, hey, if I've got all these payments and I want to know how much could I leverage that for, I would apply this net present value formula. It's just a reformulation of that simple equation. And what you see is if I apply the net present value to all these payments, the final net present value of this over the course of the 30 years is $200,000. Well, I set this up as an example that has the answer already known to us because we were talking about uh, mortgaging a $200,000 crop. But it kind of tells you what it is. It's nothing revolutionary. It's basically the exact same equation, but solving for a different parameter. So applying that then to this particular situation, <laughs> we are asking for 90% of the increment over the life of the TIF. And if we trot that out and add up all the payments, it turns out that that comes out to over $800,000. But when you apply the net present value formula, what does that money equate to in terms of today's dollars at a 5.75% discount rate? And I can address the 5.75% discount rate. The equivalent, the value that that money would bring to us today is that 369000 So that's what we are 
trying to get is the 369,000, which is roughly 24% of our overall cost. That's what we're shooting for. Uh, the 5.75, well, right now, 30 year mortgage rates are hovering around four and an eighth to four and a quarter. Uh, if we go to the commercial side of things, they're typically around 5%. Uh, of course, commercial isn't going to allow you to go at a 30 year rate. The best you're going to be able to do is 20 year amortization with probably 10 year or five year money. But uh, that is a 5% interest rate when you've got a property to leverage it. Now, a bank is only going to give us 80% loan to value. So this TIF monies is, in effect, going to be not secured by an actual building, but rather it's secured by your promise to give us back that money. Uh, that commands an even higher interest rate from banks. And so 5% is what I'm saying the commercial rate is. That premium to get something that is not secured by a being, by and in fact a building, is going to cost us 0.75 points. So that's why we're at 5.75. Uh, so there are two different numbers. But one is, what is the value of the, num of the money today? The other one is, what is the cumulative sum of all the money over the course of the lifespan of the tip. So from our standpoint, you know, we heard from Todd Taves a couple weeks ago that typically investors in real estate look for between 20 and 25%. Uh, one might say that it's reasonable for a real estate investor to look for 15%. We appreciate part of the dilemma is the economics around the area. Part of the dilemma is the particular building and the expenses and all that where when we come in and ask for the TIF monies, the best we can even hope for, our expected value of the internal rate of return is 4.72%. From our perspective, why are we doing this? Well, the development team is all local here from Oshkosh. We like Oshkosh, we want to see it thrive. We've had immense support from the community. City staff has done great things for us in terms of getting things done relatively quickly because we had the demand of getting a tenant in by a certain time frame. We appreciate all of that. You guys have supported us, the, con or the plan commission, everybody has supported us. Betty has come and questioned me, I get it. There are <laughs> gonna always be questions, I appreciate that. Uh, but for the most part, we've seen nothing but support. And the fact of the matter is, it's a historic building, it's landmarked by the city, and it's just a cool building, and we wanna see that thing preserved. Uh, <coughs> so, in order to achieve the, the 4.72 IRR, we need to keep the TIF open for the full 27 years. I kind of showed the graph of how that net present value calculated out. It took the full 27 years to get to that $369,000 uh, of present value. The agreement uh, that we're asking you to approve today includes the look back clause. That's the responsible thing to do. If in fact something about the economy substantially changes, we appreciate the fact that our internal rate of return might be much better than what we're projecting and the look back clause is there to protect you guys to make sure if we're getting too much, we stop the tip payments. So that's there and we happily accept that. Uh, we are extremely appreciative of all the support that we got and we hope that you guys will support the development agreement here today. That's my spiel for today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak to this resolution? If not, I'll bring it back to council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion or questions? Mr. Davis. Yes. Uh, reminder, there's two agreements. One is for the TIF agreement, and that uh, addresses a lot of the items that uh, Mr. Hess <coughs> described. Uh, those numbers are in the TIF agreement. Uh, there's, there's a number that translates from the TIF agreement also to the right-of-way development. Uh, that's the cost of the public improvements that the developer is also paying as part of this project. They're paying that up front. The city's not responsible for that. Uh, it's to the tune of $121,950. Uh, most of that will be paid by the developer directly to the contractors. There's some things that the city will install for street lights and signage and uh, land, uh, striping pave, uh, on the pavement. Uh, that's something the city will actually bill them directly. The city staff will do that work. It totals up to about the, that $121,000, $122,000. They'll spend $108,000 on their own contractors to work in the right-of-way. And then there's about $54,000 of that work is being done within the TIF district. So all those numbers are in the agreement. They all mean something a little different. 
uh, but the most, most important number is, is the same one in both agreements, the, the uh, $121,000 for all the public improvements that the developer will be responsible for. I think uh, I, don't, I didn't see anything I could dispute with Mr. Hess on his presentation regarding the numbers as he's, he's presented those. Uh, I do have Mr. Taves from Ellers in case there's any questions on any part of the calculation for that as well. We did include the look back clause because a uh, little subtlety to that, uh, we also include a, a look back if there's a sale before the 10 years just in case uh, they're doing uh, great gangbusters and the sale is reflected in, in that. So uh, in, if there's a sale, there'd be a look back as well as at the 10 year uh, time frame. So, I guess that's a possibility uh, that we've been now included in our, our TIF agreements as well. With that being said, um, I guess this is one of the first I, of all the TIFs I've approved in developer agreements. If there is a sale, can the TIF, can the city pull the TIF? I beg your pardon? Could the city pull the TIF if there's a sale? Because isn't this agreement with it, this de it depends on the sale price. The group. Yes, it depends on the sale price. If, if the analysis of the sale shows they're getting more than a 15% return, then yes, it would terminate at that point. Okay. And then also, you know, we talk about the 10-year look back. Obviously, staff monitors all our TIFs monthly, mm -hmm. weekly, yearly to see where they all are because I know we get a report every once in a while where our TIFs are at, some that are performing well, some that are underperforming. We view done donor tips and things so um, it's more than just the 10 years we don't wait 10 years to finally take a look at this tip and say was well, it working is it not working yes the council gets it as part of their annual budget and right. we give, like you said we give you a tip report midway through the year as well uh, which not only includes the, the budgetary items but also includes our updates as to how many businesses and employees are been created within the tip districts because that's part of the economic impact that we're also calculating as part of our our tax increment financing. The more recent TIFs are a little different in that, uh, I, I think as Mr. Taves has pointed out in the past, we've shifted some of the risk from the city for these public improvements with the PAYGO and the public improvements to the developer. Uh, so we've put the city in a uh, belt and suspenders kind of condition in that uh, the city's not obligated for the upfront costs and the, the improvements have to be made not on the city's dime. The only way the developer gets uh, uh, paid back is if they keep making the property tax payments and uh, that's the only way they can recover it. It's not a debt, but if they continue to perform as uh, expected or projected, then they could recover that funding. Okay, very good, thank you. Just one comment, and this, this does not appear in the numbers. Uh, we, this project will eliminate another piece of blight in the city. I don't know how you calculate that figure, but it's been a blighted property for a decade. I mean, I can count the times that the grass has been growing, you know, a couple feet high and uh, big signs for sale that were fading that uh, I think, you know, it's, it's critical that we keep addressing the blight in this community and either get rid of it or rehab it, bring it back to life. <coughs> Mosby. I guess to your your question, uh, Mr. Mayor, I thought about that over the weekend, um, and I guess if you take a look at um, you know when we've had situations, and you know once it gets beyond ten years, um, you know because there's been different different food for thought, you know we've got more and more activity coming into Ashgash, so is there the potential that somebody could buy it, buy it, do it some something with it, and not need city tax or a city or a TIF? So I mean, that's certainly the possibility, but I can look back over the 20 years that I've lived here and seen that happen before, only to have us have to try to acquire the property, pay for that, pay for legal work, tear it down, and hope that at some point somebody does buy it. So I mean, it, there's no guarantees either way. Um, I wanna thank Mr. Hess for the presentation. I had a meeting with, with uh, uh, Chet Wiesenberg and, and Tim Hess probably about a little over about a week and a half ago um, and I said you know it's really important to the public and the council to really understand the dynamics of why people you know invest and why they ask for TIFs. T 
Tim and Chet could probably also tell you that I one of the comments that I made is, you know, when we did the TIF policy, when we agreed to it as a council, you know, we went from what was it, 75 and 20 years to, you know, 90 percent and 27 max, um, and and we've done what now three at the max. So, you know, I talked to Tim and Chet and said, you know, to the public and to the council, when you hear going out 27 years, what I hear is almost three decades. So, you know, that's, that's the part that I think we all struggle with and what we'd like to see is we don't want to give anything. You know, we, we want all developers to come in and use their capital or finance it through the bank and not have to do it at all, but that's also not a reality of a, of a progressing community. The 90% 27 years, quite frankly, is kind of killing me um, when there's not necessarily a ton from a standpoint of, of employment, but also the council has to take responsibility as well that our current TIF policy is what it is right now. And at any point in time, any of us could have taken it and started working on it and changing it last year or the beginning of this year. So when you look at our current policy, this TIF is exactly identical to what is currently being put in place. I may not like the 9027. I would like to see moving forward that the max is not the norm. Um, but you know I also look at what are some of the alternatives. I do like the idea that right now it's it's kept local and I and as I said two or three weeks ago in our last council meeting, you know, we've been in situations where we've approved a TIF and there's there's no guarantees that anything is necessarily going in there. And when, you know, when this came to us three weeks ago, you know, the ink is already <coughs> dry on two tenants, one of seven years, one of 10 years. Again, nothing's ever guaranteed. Um, but, you know, that, that's just some of the things. And, and like I said, um, Mr. Hess, thank you for putting this together because it was probably really one of the best presentations of explaining how this is really from anybody that's come and asked for a TIF. So, and for a numbers guy, it actually was pretty entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd echo many of the comments that Ms. Allison Osby made. Um, Mr. Hess, as, a, as an accountant, my training always told me that you say two and two is four, but prove it to me. Nice proof. And Mr. Wiesenberg, thank you for our conversation of last week and bringing, filling me in on these other things. And uh, I look forward to this project being completed. And as it was indicated, there are two tenants signed to long-term leases. So <clears throat> that speaks well to the, to the project. The fact that one lease is 10 years, maybe we might be looking back 10 years from now. Are there any further, Ms. Palmer? So this is really challenging um, because it is a cool building. It is a cool project. I love historic structures being conserved and um, the work that you do. Thank you, Mr. Hess, for the, the number crunching, too. That helps. Um, I think when we talk about our current policy and the 90 percent allowance up to a maximum of 27 years it's my understanding that we can do that that there's not an assumption that we will do that in fact um, you know some cities limit uh, things now to you know 10 or 15 years and I was really hoping that after um, our discussion <coughs> I, I, I did also meet with Mr. Hess and, and Mr. Wieseberg that that what we would be seeing in the development agreement would actually come back for less money and shorter. But in fact, there we actually had some calculations that came back higher than was originally proposed. Um, I'd just like, um, <coughs> Davis, if you could talk a little bit about how um, your department believes the public purpose or the benefit um, outweighs what we would be looking at in these extended costs over the life of the TIF. 
Well, number one, <clears throat> uh, you've talked already about the rehabilitation and the blight removal for the property, and I think you're right that it is a catalyst for the South Shore redevelopment because we've got multiple blocks to be redeveloped on the South Shore. Uh, so this would be another piece of that uh, building, another building block for that uh, entire Sawdust District project. Uh, and I think you can't underestimate the, the momentum and the capital attraction that uh, this and other projects are starting uh, to create here in Oshkosh. So there's the whole economic impact uh, uh, factor. Uh, there's also the historic preservation uh, with it's the historic uh, mill. Uh, and it's got a very unique architecture to it, which I think the Landmarks Commission and the Plan Commission <coughs> certainly recognize. Uh, and then they're making some public improvements on the property that, around the property, that benefit uh, the city in general with the extension of the river walk, uh, the parking that they're going to provide to the public uh, on the site, as well as their <coughs> private on-street parking. Uh, then I'd also uh, point out that the developer is actually paying for this up front, so it's not a general obligation debt of the city. Uh, so that avoids any conflicts with the city's capital improvement program or trying to bump other projects uh, to try to get this economic development project done. So that saves uh, trying to juggle the capital improvement program projects quite a bit. Uh, and then as far as the investment over time, I would say that since they have to perform to, uh, to earn the PAYGO, uh, the city is not as great a risk as we had been in other PAYGOs in the far distant past. Uh, with these today's, today's PAYGOs, they have to make the payment. Uh, and yes, it is at the 90%, but we've had other PAYGOs that were basically 100% uh, until we started getting smarter about projects. Uh, so. If anything, I'd say this one isn't as uh, charitable as we have been in the past on other projects, and I think the city's in a much better uh, uh, liability position. I think in talking to Mr. Roloff earlier today, he said this is a great way to, uh, do you remember exactly how you phrased that regarding the, the, the uh, uh, security that we have with this type of project? Yeah. I think I was talking about that we don't have to put up security for these projects as we have with other times. Other yeah. times we put up a significant amount of security uh, it, with, with general obligation borrowing in effect. So mm -hmm. this takes that away and that, that transfers the risk to the developers, but then they, they reap the rewards of that, that investment. Mm -hmm. I think I'll kind of repeat what I said before, but you know, for those of us who have grown up in Oshkosh, we have seen a lot of our history go to the landfill. You know, how many people say, gee, I wish we wouldn't have torn the Atherton down, I wish we had done this, wish we had done that. I think, I think, I think, from my standpoint, a progressive city is one that preserves it, its past. And realize that it's a, it's a major component of economic development. Uh, city after city, both in the state, throughout the country, they have they have used their, their, their history, their architecture, their stories to attract people of the community who spend money, which is economic development. It's easier to get those people here than it is to get a new factory in town. Um, so, again, you know, I'm not a, a numbers guy. I think the experts have looked at the numbers, Ms. Larson, Mr. Taves. Um, I, I view this as it's part of the puzzle of putting the city on a very progressive forward path. So I'm very much in support of this project. Can we just ask Mr. Taves to come up and uh... And Alan, what was the total cost of our infrastructure that is being fronted by the developer? Uh, I believe it's $121,950. I think you said part, that, but I forgot. Part of that will be funded by them directly, and part of it will be done by city crews, and then they'll have to pay that when the city crews work is done with the street lighting, the striping, and the street signage. So, Mr. Taves, thanks mm -hmm. for being here. Um, could you maybe just talk a little bit about how some of those numbers and some of the analysis and assumptions have changed from sure. 
the sure. initial the, to the where long we're and at the now. short of it is we had an error in the project plan that understated the time it would take to reach that present value that Mr. Hess explained by four years. So after relooking at that, we do agree uh, with their numbers. So we went from, was it 703? Six, six, 60 to something to just over 800. Mm -hmm. So we would we do agree with their numbers that that is an accurate calculation. You know, also remember that the numbers are going to be what they're going to be. So if the increment is greater, the TIT's going to reach that present value quicker. Conversely, if you've got uh, you know, lesser tax payments coming in, it's going to actually take longer. Uh, it could even potentially be the case that it's not fully paid out over the, you know, the entire life of the TIT. So these are all projections that will actually be based on what payments at 90% reach that present value. Thank you. If, uh, are there any further comments or questions from council? Would you please take a roll? Paul Mary? No. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? No. Crozy? No. Peck? Aye. Mayor Cummings? Aye. Carried 4 3. Next is Resolution 17-295, Approved Development and Maintenance Agreement and Waiver of Special Assessment Proceedings for the Grand Reed Redevelopment Project for Construction Within Rights of Way on West 5th Avenue, West 6th Avenue, and Nebraska Street. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this resolution? Bring it back to the Council for a motion and a second. <coughs> so moved. Second. Discussion. Just Mr. Davis, you want to just briefly explain this part yes this. Uh, this is separate from the TIF agreement this is for the improvements in the right-of-way mm -hmm. and this uh, puts the developer on the hook and they signed a uh, waiver of special assessment so these costs will be passed on so I think that's what I was trying to allude to is mm -hmm. that the developers on the hook for these costs and if, if you Regardless of what you think about the project, uh, this will transfer all the risk from the city to the developer. So if, to minimize right. the city's risk, you still want to have this uh, piece of the project approved. Is that uh, correct yep. characterization, yep. Mr. Rola? Yeah, that's, uh, th this is very typical for, for development agreements we have with, with any time we're putting in public improvements. We want to make sure that the uh, developer is held responsible. So there's features in there. There's the waiver of special assessment, uh, and what that means is if they don't do the work, then we can go and get it done and charge them back. Uh, and, and that's similar to a subdivision agreement uh, or any other similar type of agreement. So this is, these are the protections on the public uh, improvement side. Very good. Thank you. Any further questions, comments, discussion? Would you please take the roll? Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Crowsey? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Resolution 17 296. It's not your turn. <laughs> All right, now. Let me read it first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Resolution 17-296, resolution determining to issue $5,440,000 aggregate principal amount of general obligation corporate purpose bonds series 2017A of the City of Oshkosh, Winnebago County, Wisconsin, in such amount providing details prescribing the form of bond and wearing the bonds to the best bidder and loving taxes. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak to this? I see no one out there. Right. Bring it back to council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion. All right. Mr. Now, fine. Yeah, all right. Um, basically, a couple of things. This is, these bond issues are for projects that were approved in the <coughs> 2017 capital improvement, correct? That's correct. All right. So this is already, these are already expenditures that this council has approved. Uh, it falls within our, is the, gen, the GO bonds and notes fall within our 11.4 cap, correct? Okay. Uh, 
standards. So we're living up to our debt management structure. So with that, Mr. Taves, how did things go with the sale? And I believe some of it has probably has to do with the fact that we are maintaining and managing prudently our long-term debt, which yes. ties to our interest so rates. The uh, maintenance or the strategy the city's been implementing has been a positive factor in terms of the conversations we've been having with Moody's. Uh, we're selling a total of five series of bonds to support the CIP. This is the first three of five sales. The remaining two will be two weeks uh, from tonight. So the first uh, resolution, 296, uh, is for the Series 17 AGO bonds. This is going to fund the street improvements uh, and the park improvements in the CIP with a 19-year amortization. Uh, you received four bids on this issue. The winning bid came in from Morgan Stanley with a true interest rate of 2.66%. Uh, that's about 43 one hundredths of a percent less uh, than the planning estimate we had used. Uh, you'll notice that the final resolution you were provided with this evening the uh, par amount is reduced to five million uh, four hundred and forty, uh, so that's a seventy thousand dollar reduction. About half of that came from premium uh, that was received as part of the bid, and the balance in unused discount and reductions in the cost of issuance. Uh, when you roll all that up, as compared to the pre-sale estimate that you were provided uh, several months ago, the total cost of the financing uh, over the life of the bonds will be two hundred fifteen or two hundred fourteen thousand. 573 less. And, and if you just, it is, what is, if you could edify the public, what's a re off, what's a bid premium? So a bid premium is when uh, the purchaser is actually paying a greater amount than the face value of the bonds. Uh, what that allows them to do is to re offer them in the secondary market with a higher interest rate. So you effectively are paying a somewhat higher uh, interest rate than market, but in return you're getting a cash payment. So part of that cash payment we use to reduce the issue size, uh, and then part of the cash payment in the case of general obligation securities, because of state law we have to deposit to the debt service fund, and then you've got those monies available, in this case to offset uh, portions of the next three years interest payment. So from your perspective, that premium doesn't hurt you because it gets you back to the same place you would have been uh, by either being able to reduce the amount of bonds issued and or having that cash on hand to offset interest payments. <clears throat> Any further questions? Would you please take the roll? Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Hansky? Aye. Krause? Aye. Peck? Aye. Air Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Resolution 17 297, resolution determining to issue $5,830,000 aggregate principal amount of general obligation promissory notes, series 2017 B of the City of Oshkosh, Winnebago County, Wisconsin, in such amount, providing details prescribing the form of note awarding the notes to the best bidder and loving taxes. Anyone from the public that would like to speak to this? I see no one coming forward. Bring it back to council for a motion and a second. Move for approval. Second. Discussion? Mr. Taves. Received uh, four bids as well, but this time the winner was uh, Hutchinson Shockley Early and Company. The uh, true interest rate is 1.892, uh, which is 61 one hundredths less than the pre-sale estimate. Uh, this issue is being reduced by 260,000 down to 5,830. Uh, one big portion of that was the fact that from the time you authorized the note several months ago, uh, the staff removed $193,000 of projects uh, that no longer require uh, debt financing. Uh, but in addition to that, we had the same type of dynamic with a bit of a premium, uh, also reduced cost of issuance and unused discount. So all told, as compared to the pre-sale estimate, the uh, cost of the financing is 423000 less, uh, but again, we took 193000 out in projects, so it would be more fair to say that you're about a couple hundred thousand under what you would have been uh, as a result of market conditions had you only authorized the a lower amount to begin with. Thank you. Any other questions? Please take the roll. Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Krause? Aye. Heck? Aye. Air Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Final resolution 17 298, resolution providing for the issuance and sale of 
$8,808,000 aggregate principal amount of water system revenue bonds series 2017C of the City of Oshkosh, Winnebago County, Wisconsin, providing details prescribing the form of bond, awarding said revenue bonds to the best bidder, and providing for the payment of said revenue bonds and other details and covenants with respect thereto. I see no one coming forward from the public, so I will bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Discussion? <coughs> Also uh, received four bids on this one. The uh, winner was uh, Morgan Stanley, the same purchaser as the uh, GEO bonds. Uh, as the issue title implies, it's is paying for water system improvements. Uh, you received a true interest rate of 2.859, which was 68 one hundredths, uh, less than the pre-sale estimate. Uh, we're able to reduce the issue size by 690000 uh, down to 8880 Again, uh, we have a premium involved in the case of revenue bonds. There's no requirement to deposit any of it to the debt service fund, so we use the entirety of it to reduce the issue size. Uh, the other thing that happens with revenue bonds is you have a debt service reserve requirement, and as we reduce the issue size, we see better interest rates. That debt service reserve requirement is smaller as well, so there are some associated reductions with that. Uh, all told, the uh, total issue principal and interest will be 765 thousand less than the pre-sale estimate as it relates to the earlier conversation about your impending uh, rate case uh, obviously this is helpful in the sense that uh, you know we now update numbers with actual results and there'll be less of a debt service requirement associated with this as compared to what we were using uh, for earlier planning so that has a uh, positive secondary impact on uh, future rates as well thank you any other questions from council Please take the roll. Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Krause? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're at the council discussion, direction of city manager, and future agenda items. The first future agenda items is a meeting with local legislatures, state, represent, state representatives. Uh, we have to be determined after legislation session ends. Any just have that in there um, but I wanted to share with the council conversation I didn't even tell you I was going to mention it Steve oh that's uh, right. <laughs> uh, Deputy Mayor Herman and I, I met for a few minutes before the meeting tonight and he mentioned that um, he had acted on something that you had each received uh, or I believe you received from the League of Municipalities in terms of chiming in on the um, uh, the personal property tax the council's already taken a role on that and that's very important so even if we even though we're not going to be able to have this meeting until after the legislative session ends, I think it's important. If you do, if you did receive that email, certainly you know click the site and let the, let them know. Uh, the, the whole issue there is making sure that we're made whole. Uh, if they are going to eliminate the personal property tax, that's going to have a significant impact of about 1.4 million dollars. Right. Certainly, our yeah. legislators need to know that. If we can't get a meeting together with them because they're busy down in Madison. I think it does behoove us to to get that out so I appreciate that and if you if you have done that I also want to thank you it has an impact I can guarantee you that the impact of you sending that email and I think the leagues tried to make it as easy as possible so click away I encourage you to do it and uh, and there's other issues that they ask about as well <coughs> certainly chime in as well and the more the the more consistent message that uh, our legislators here I think it has a more <coughs> uh, powerful impact I responded as Steve did to the uh, the lease request or, uh, for the uh, personal property tax and the historic tax credits. Right. And it, it takes a couple of minutes to do it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, they, they do all the work for you if you want to add a few comments beginning to end. Right. Do the, it. the other thing that came with the last part from the league that might be of an interest to our citizens is they're looking at a three year phase in, possibly, as an amendment to that instead of all at once, which would make it a little easier for communities. but. The other piece of it is they aren't looking at increasing that rate. Whatever you get, you get. And that's another piece of what needs to be lobbied is that they need to put in some step increases over the years. You can't just say, hey, we're taking this away and we'll fund it, but we're going to fund it at 2018 or 2017 rate. In 2025, too bad, you're still at the 2017 rate. I mean, that's just like... 
Well, it's kind of like Mr. Hayes was talking about when, yeah. you know, when we're out bidding out these things for 20 years, we got some look backs and we're doing things to try to reduce our interest rates and pay things off. And so it's the same principle in a sense. The legislature's got to realize that they're going to take a revenue sh share away from the communities. They got to fund it and continue to increase their funding to it. The, the reason I wanted to bring that up uh, from Deputy Mayor Herman was that that's very valuable. The other half of it is I, I've talked to some of my other colleagues and one of the things they suggested is to uh, when we do have our meeting with them uh, give our legislators just a takeaway here are some legislative issues we know we're coming before you just it's a reminder we may have already said it to them you've done it but it, it just reinforces it because when you do it individually it has an impact when you do it collectively it also has an impact so if we so the, the suggestion was a little take-home uh, uh, gift for them is just where we are on some of these major legislative issues and I think council's given us really good direction dark store is another one and that's that's continuing to get to get momentum uh, it, it may or may not get addressed in the in the budget I don't think it should but it might you never know and so we want to get our word out on that so that's that's all, that's all I have to I just one quick on. thing on this with the league uh, last uh, Wednesday Thursday and Friday the finance director Lodge and I were at a uh, league urban policy forum uh, discussing new funding sources uh, for cities and villages because of what is happening uh, in Madison so that was a pretty lively discussion and there were no solutions but we have to start looking for new funding sources anticipating more and more cuts out of uh, Madison so. uh, next we have a, a date for the TIF workshop yeah I'm sorry we didn't put it in the agenda it's next Tuesday uh, 6 p.m. Uh, that's a rough time because it's it's if the Planning Commission runs a little over it'll run it'll run after <coughs> after that but the idea is uh, if the Planning Commissioners want to stick around we thought it'd be uh, beneficial for them as well uh, and staff will be ready to have a presentation and I think the, the, the deputy mayor has something he wants to talk about in terms of that as well so uh, well, but 6 p.m. right here in uh, 404 well it actually was a comment or discussion between myself and the city manager and Mr. Davis that our TIP policy we had talked about last year already about having some modification to our TIP policy. So we talked about just recently with TIP 32 and the developer agreements, you know, one size fits all doesn't really work on some of these developments. So we've had that discussion. I know Mr. Davis has, has made some changes and Mr. Roloff informed me today, I guess we've been, the staff has been using some of those changes to, to, to protect ourselves with our pay go tips so I just wanted to bring it up that um, there'll be some updates um, and possibly some action by the council in the future with approving a secondary if Alan you want to add a little more to that conversation uh, I'd appreciate it thanks uh, we're planning on covering a lot of things at the workshop everything from how does TIF work basic 101 TIF to economic development uh, to how the process works in, in Oshkosh because it's uh, we're pretty sophisticated when it comes to reviewing these types of things that a lot of developers actually aren't used to. Uh, and then there's a lot of policy uh, decisions that the council could make on, on uh, TIF. Uh, so that's in general what we planned on covering, but if there's anything in specific the council wants us to cover, tell me now or tell me in the next 24 hours so I can make sure we include it in the agenda and I can put some PowerPoint slides together for every item that's on the agenda. And Mayor, um, Mr. Davis and I have already met and I already gave him my wish list, right? Yes. Yep. And I remember blight was one of your issues as well. How we, how we define it. Yes. Right? Um, also looking at some of the numbers of perhaps TIF pre-applications that we may not, that never even made the cut. Correct. That you staff know. just denied. And, oh. and not naming names or anything, just right. some examples. kind of general numbers, we have those examples. kinds of things. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, how going forward, given that I think we've met, we've met like almost half of our 12% or with this most recent one, you know, how we might strategically prioritize which ones are selected going mm -hmm. forward. And the grant, or I'm sorry, the criteria scoring. Yes. We talked about as well, mm -hmm. how that gets scored. Mm-hmm. So if there's anything else, I'd appreciate some comment from the council 
uh, at your earliest convenience so that I can make sure we incorporate that so it's a good workshop for everybody. Uh, one quick suggestion, I would talk to the members of the RDA because we are talking more uh, light elimination, elimination as it pertains to neighborhoods, not just old, old factories and old commercial industrial properties. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would it, would it make sense, Mr. Proloff or Mr. Davis, to have the joint review members come? I mean, they approve. They have to approve it, too. I mean, that's the school district rep, the Fox Valley mm -hmm. Tech rep. Mm -hmm. um, would it make any sense to have them to get a little better understanding where we're coming from? Yeah, Since yeah, they actually, we, they're the taxing entity, and so they, and there's a citizen on there. I think Mr. Yeah. Castle's on there. Uh, the, the only exception, and thank you for mentioning it because you reminded me to tell you something. Uh, I probably would have brought up the next agenda item. Mr. Harris likely wouldn't be able to make it because that uh, this time conflicts with the county board meeting, and Mr. Okay. Harris would be there. And I will be late for this workshop because that's when the county is considering the the formal waiver of the uh, unpaid taxes on the Buckstaff building. Okay. So uh, I'm going there to represent the city, uh, and I'll be back as, as soon as we're done with okay. that. So I'll be a little late, but we can certainly extend to the school district. I think uh, Ms. Garner would be very interested in doing that. Mm -hmm. Be sure to let Ms. Cohn know, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Castle, and then me, because I'm the <laughs> other joint review board member. So uh, yeah, we can do that. That's a great idea. Was there an invite extended to uh, Jason White at GoEDC? Yes. He's coming. In fact, okay. I asked him <laughs> to talk about economic development and how uh, Oshkosh fits in the, say, economic development ecosystem because there's national things, <coughs> state things, regional things that we don't have a whole lot of control over. Uh, but there's some things at the local level that we have a lot of control over. So I thought it'd be good to give us a little context in that. Um, we also extend an olive branch to Mr. Kleeman since he's the Chamber's Economic Development Coordinator. There's no reason why we can't. can't. So no. if there's anybody else, you know, between... I mean, I think it's important that all our organizations that... I mean, we aren't going to invite all the realtors, obviously, but those that have worked with the city could potentially be working with the city that maybe isn't familiar with how our tip policy works. You know, you mentioned Jason White and you mentioned some others. I guess I would leave it up to you guys as the experts to, if there's somebody you think should be there, invite. Mr. Very Davis, good. also too for, for the workshop, do you think you could gather, because I know, you know, Wisconsin is one area, but when I think of a number of communities like Dubuque and there's some in Minnesota and Michigan and Illinois, you know, what, what are those other communities doing as far as, you know, because to Ms. Palmieri's point, you know, there are some that go max maybe 15, um, but I also know there's others that are doing 22, 25, 27. So I'd be interested to know in the Midwest, comparing apples to apples, you know, really what is the breakdown? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how many have have the TIF policy that we do versus, say, you know, other <coughs> communities. But I think with that being said, too, um, with especially within probably this last six to 12 months, it's also, I think, council's responsibility to come to the workshop next week with ideas themselves. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's one thing to say no to things, but then you better come with some type of a plan. So I think it's also our responsibility to be doing our homework um, and looking at what our community is compared to others. Um, and if we don't like a policy, then it really is up to us to initiate the change and to direct staff to do that. So I would challenge my colleagues <coughs> with that moving into next week. Absolutely. And any time between you know, now and, well, we'd like to get the agenda finalized, but still let us know if you something comes up something come to your mind about things you like us to take a look at those are some good ideas thank you everybody for for your comments uh, one question we're, we're growing the number of attendees do we want to put a time limit on this in other words respect people's time well we usually average 45 minutes to an hour I imagine this one might be an hour and a half we were figuring an hour and a half to two yeah. that's why we were doing it on six night. to seven thirty yep 
Yeah. yeah. But then I, I'm hoping plan commission then could run very effectively as well so that we can get going as close to six it, as possible. It, it <laughs> depends what's on the agenda. Well, Keeping that in mind. Mr. Davis controls Make the agenda it with well, Mr. Burridge. So. And, the, and yes, uh, the <laughs> downside for the plan commission is they don't have a 4th of July plan commission meeting, so we had to move some of those projects from July up to the June. So oh. it is a longer than average agenda, okay. unfortunately. But we will endeavor to get everything done by 6 o'clock. Okay. You can talk to your council liaison, too. I, I, I guess, you know, just to finish oh, what is that uh, me? council member Alison no Osby needs, mentioned, no is we compete up and down the Fox River Valley for competition, for businesses, for other entities. Absolutely. Would it make sense to kind of look at Fond du Lac's tip policy and Appleton's and Green Bay's and even this Nina Menasha? Because, you know, I'm sure developers know which communities might be better for them, not just to put the business there, but to work with different cities, communities, councils, all that, mm -hmm. all of that. Absolutely, good suggestion. So, we'll make sure we so kind of take a just a soft look at mm -hmm. you know what other communities are doing right in our in our neighborhood mm -hmm. because we we all go to these meetings and stuff and we were at one at the Wisconsin um, Housing did down in Fond du Lac and they were we we're the largest community. Fond du Lac was the next. It was all small little communities, Hilbert and Chilton, I think, and whoever else was there. We all have the same issues. Yeah, we all have the same it's issues, but varying size. Variant size of the community, does that make a difference in policies? I'm sure it does. Absolutely. You may find, you know, Mr. Davis, uh, at the outset of uh, the discussion on the uh, greenery, we probably are more, a little more sophisticated than others, so we may not necessarily find a policy. And yeah. part of, I think, the council's desire to get a policy is to get those best practices that are out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And could I add also, um, I also had emailed um, Ms. Lawrenson regarding some of the legal things that are going on with, for and example, I Eau Claire, are we going to add that well. to the, to the, uh, mm -hmm. there's some challenges to the blight and the but for, so if we could just look at how those court cases are impacting, again, So now that we have three hours, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've, you know, this was initially for a council, now we've added half the community, we're researching half the state, I mean, do we have time to do what this session was intended to do? Well, then on the flip side, then we should not have it on the night of planned commission either, with all due respect. Then this, the 22nd should not have been picked. Yeah. We should have picked a different a different night. We'll fit it in. Okay. 20th. Yeah, 20th before. Yeah, that's right. What's 20th? You said 22nd. 13th. Oh! So don't come Thursday. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you, are you hiding two days? <laughs> Okay, moving on Thank you, Mr. to Mayor. citizen statements. I see no citizens to make statements, so I will forego reading the <laughs> the usual lingo. Uh, we have council member announcements and statements. There's nothing on there. So now it is Mr. Roloff's turn for announcements and statements. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in your packet is Mr. Davis's update on the arena and public improvements. Uh, we did not have this information formally as of Friday when Mr. Davis put this together, but you may have heard uh, through some of the announcements that we, uh, that WEDC, Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, announced uh, the award of a $250,000 grant towards in public improvements associated with the ARENA project. We were very excited to see that. We, the indications were there, but we didn't have any formal announcement until yesterday, so uh, we're very pleased to that. That'll help lower the costs uh, associated with uh, uh, the developers putting out those public improvements. We uh, pre on the consent agenda was the initial resolution for the public improvements that'll help knock those costs down to uh, to the properties in that area. So we're real excited about that. Um, the project, as you can see, the framing is up, so that's exciting too. Uh, Mr. Pierce uh, informs me we're still on schedule, and we're we're pleased to hear that we're not directly involved in that, but. We're directly involved with the public improvements, and James, we open the bids on that tomorrow? Thursday. Thursday, excuse me. So Thursday, so within the next couple of weeks, you'll likely see those uh, those improvements coming forward and crossing our fingers for good <coughs> bids. We have a name, too. Yes, we do, yes. I've heard that. Uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 I got that from somebody else, sorry. Uh, so yes, yeah, they've, they've done the announcement. I guess the logo and that's coming out 
uh, soon as well. 22nd. Yeah. yeah, they're doing so, some kind of. 20 seconds. That's what you were getting excited about. So 20 <laughs> seconds for that. So, uh, But that's all I have on that one. And then the citizen survey, uh, we had asked uh, Professor Nolenberger before he left to clean up the survey a little more. There were some questions that we had. Um, I did not have a chance to read the final, final version, uh, but we have put it online. Uh, so I don't have a report for you tonight, but I'd encourage you to take a look. It's on our website, and I'll have a more formal, uh, just a brief uh, overview of the results of the survey at the next council meeting. Are you saying there's like a revised version compared to what we received previously? Yes, I, we found some, uh, yeah, I got it to you right away. And we found some things that were, okay. there was some missing data. And so we just wanted to get it cleaned up. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I'll turn this over to Deputy Mayor Herman for a motion to go into a closed session. Thank you, Mayor. I move that following the adjournment of this meeting that the council convene in the closed session to discuss the possible acquisition of property at and or adjacent to the former Kenas and Falls Quarry within the city of Oshkosh were competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session pursuant to section 19.85 parent 1 parent E of the Wisconsin State Statute. Second. Please take the roll. Paul Mary? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Hansky? Aye. Krause? Aye. Peck? Aye. Mayor Cummings? Aye. Carried seven. I will look for a motion, mo motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Adjourn. Ten after. Uh, 10 after.